Where does the difference between the past and the future come from? The laws of science do not distinguish between the past and the future. Yet, there is a big difference between the past and future in ordinary life. You may see a cup of tea fall off a table and break into pieces on the floor, but you will never see the cup gather itself back together and jump back on the table. The increase of disorder, or entropy, is what distinguishes the past from the future, giving a direction to time. Before I caught pneumonia, my speech had been getting more slurred, so that only a few people who knew me well could understand me. But at least I could communicate. I wrote scientific papers by dictating to a secretary, and I gave seminars through an interpreter. And then, a tracheostomy operation removed my ability to speak altogether. After a long time, Después de mucho tiempo, o al menos eso parecía, se presentaron con ese maravilloso aparato. No lo tenían en el hospital Cambridge. Lo habían traído de Londres. Era alta tecnología, poderse comunicar con alguien sin voz. Es como un trozo de plástico de este tamaño y las letras del alfabeto colocadas así con un agujero en el medio. Lo pones entre tú y la otra persona y él mira una letra. Tú puedes ver qué letra está mirando casi siempre aunque a veces no está seguro. Así que el paciente deletreaba lo que quería. Él miraba una letra, por ejemplo, la A. Tú preguntabas la A. Eso es. Parecía un acertijo. A computer expert in California heard of my plight and sent me a computer program called Equalizer. This allowed me to select words from a series of menus on the screen by pressing a switch in my hand. These words could then be sent to a speech synthesizer attached to my wheelchair. Much to my surprise, I found I was able to communicate much better than before. What? I began to wonder what would happen when the universe stopped expanding and began to contract. Would we see broken cups gather themselves together off the floor and jump back onto the table? Would we be able to remember tomorrow's prices and make a fortune off the stock market? It seemed to me the universe had to return to a smooth and ordered state when it recollapsed. If this were so, Time would go backwards when the universe began to collapse. People in the contracting phase would live their lives backward. They would die before they were born and get younger as the universe got small again. Eventually, they would return to the womb. He gave me my first problem to do. Me planteó mi primer problema. Um, me pidió que resolviese un problema matemático y normalmente al plantear un problema sabe cuál va a ser la solución. Me puse a ello y tardé unos meses en comprender de qué iba. Volví y le dije, esta es mi respuesta. Él me dijo, no, no es lo que esperaba. Le dije, es lo que me sale. Fui a la pizarra y se lo expliqué. Me dijo, ¿has pensado en ese caso particular? Le dije, ah, pues no. 
Hice cálculos sobre lo que él me decía. Volví unas semanas después y le dije, Steven, no lo consigo. Sigo obteniendo la misma respuesta que antes. Él me dijo, no, 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 algo falla. ¿Has pensado en esto? Dije, oh no, he olvidado ese caso particular. Así que volví al tablero a rehacer los cálculos y de nuevo la misma respuesta. Así que fui a verle. Esto ya duraba dos o tres meses. Por fin me dijo, quizá una de tus aproximaciones no es válida. Un colega y yo decidimos utilizar un ordenador. Se tarda mucho tiempo en escribir los programas y en asegurarse de que son correctos. Obtuvimos la respuesta y seguía siendo lo que yo había dicho y no lo que decía Steven. Fuimos a verle y le dijimos, mira, lo mismo. I had made a mistake. I had been using too simple a model of the universe. Time will not reverse direction when the universe begins to contract. People will continue to get older, so it is no good waiting until the universe recollapses to return to our youth. Einstein once asked the question, how much choice did God have in constructing the universe? If my proposal that the universe has no boundary is correct, he had no freedom at all to choose how the universe began. He would only have had the freedom to choose the laws the universe obeyed. This, however, may not have been all that much of a choice. There may well be only one unified theory that allows for the existence of structures as complicated as human beings who can investigate the laws of the universe and ask about the nature of God. Even if there is only one possible unified theory, it is just a set of rules and equations. What is it that breathes fire into the equations and makes a universe for them to describe? Why does the universe go to all the bother of existing? Is the unified theory so compelling that it brings about its own existence? Or does it need a creator? And, if so, who created him? In real time, the time in which we live, the universe has two possible destinies. It may continue to expand forever, or it may recollapse and come to an end at the Big Crunch. It would be rather like the Big Bang, but in reverse. I now believe that the universe will come to an end at the Big Crunch. I do, however, have certain advantages over many other prophets of doom. Whatever happens 10 billion years from now, I don't expect to be around to be proved wrong. Of all the pictures that I know, de todos los modelos que conozco, la cosmología más simple es aquella en la que el universo es cerrado, tiene una vida limitada y se destruye por el mismo procedimiento que un agujero negro. Si resulta que en realidad el universo tiene una vida limitada, ¿en qué se diferencia de la vida de cada uno de nosotros? On the evening of Tuesday, March 5th, 
At about 10.45, I was returning to my flat in Pinehurst. It was dark and raining. I came up the Grange Road and saw headlights approaching, but judged that they were far enough away that I could cross safely. The vehicle must have been traveling very fast, for when I got just past the middle of the road, my nurse screamed, Look out. I heard tires skidding, and my wheelchair was struck a tremendous blow in the back. I ended up in the road, with my legs over the remains of the wheelchair. The accident destroyed my wheelchair, and damaged my computer system, with which I communicate. I required 13 stitches in my head, but I was able to go back to work several days later. If we do discover a complete theory of the universe, it should in time be understandable in broad principle by everyone, not just a few scientists. Then we shall all, philosophers, scientists, and just ordinary people, be able to take part in the discussion of why it is that we and the universe exist. If we find the answer to that, it would be the ultimate triumph of human reason. For then we would know the mind of God.